Detroit Den 313. We're back, Stephen Will, talking that Detroit Lions football. Before we get started, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. Steve, what are we talking today? We're starting a fire, William. Ooh. We're starting a fire. Okay. We are, well, I am anyway, Team Jared Goff. Listen, Jared Goff was on a podcast the other day. I'm not mm-hmm. sure who the guys were he was talking with, um, <clears throat> but uh, he basically called out the Detroit media. And it's nothing that we haven't said here, man. He was just like, talking about how, you know, the Detroit media sometimes relishes in um, negativity in in this SOL mindset, the same old Lions mindset that I think is still lingering around with some of these old dinosaurs that still have jobs on the radio or in uh, other networks who just like to talk shit about players, you know, and and just aren't used to winning. Detroit is not used to winning. And and if you're not adaptable, if you're not, if you're not able to adapt to, to, present situations and stop living in this 2008 0 and 16 mindset this is how it's going to be william how do you steve feel about coming in yeah hey steve is coming in hot today I, Glo- hey. gloves are hot gloves gloves I, are on i like it man I, I i like i like the energy i like the energy that you're coming in with uh i just have a lot of emotions about it i did take the time to go back and watch everything that i could find on it um, and instead of just listening to the 10 second snippet and, and just going with that, uh, get the whole perspective. And, I did the same. I didn't watch the whole show, but I watched enough to, to have an idea of what's going on. Yeah. And then because we didn't hop on here immediately and guys, this is one thing that I want to hit real quick before I even get into it. There's opportunities that we have to hop on as soon as we hear something, it, it posts out on Twitter and we can get on and we can talk about it and rush it, but A lot of times you don't have the full perspective. A lot of times more information comes out. So that's why sometimes you might see us not be the first person or first people to just release some content. And I think that's part of what Jared Goff is talking about in the sense of like trying to get clicks, trying to get things out to be the first so you can get, you know, your information clicked the fastest. And what that's that's not what we're about. We're about talking about this team that we all love amongst the community of people that love them as well. And uh, having a good time debating uh, about t- subjects like this. So back to Jared Goff. Uh, I think that a lot of people are upset with him from what I'm seeing on Twitter. They're lashing out, saying that he's attacking the fans and he's attacking, uh, you know, Detroit media. And I even got a few text messages about it. Like, hey, are you, hey, you see what Jared Goff was oh, saying? My because, phone was blowing yeah. up yesterday. Yeah. So it's like, he's, he's basically saying like, well, it's about what you guys are doing, you know, whatever, like, cause you guys are a part of Detroit media. Now you guys are a part of the people that are talking about the Detroit lions. And, and I'll be honest, while I do feel like Steve, we are a part of Detroit media. Now we do have a nice little um, fan base and membership of people who listen to us for Detroit lions content. But I didn't feel negative about what Jared Goff said. No. I think I think that if you really peel back the layers of Jared Goff and you understand him, who is he? He's a guy that got ran out of uh, the Rams situation where he took those guys to a Super Bowl. The head coach dogged him out publicly, right? Uh, they They basically said that they had a way better situation than Matt Stafford and basically – Jared Goff couldn't do this. He couldn't do that or whatever. Now, hey, do I think that Matt Stafford is a better quarterback overall than Jared Goff potentially? I I could say that. That's that's cool. That's fine. Do I think we got a damn good quarterback in Detroit and Jared Goff? Hell yeah, I do, man. Hell yeah, I do. And we might nitpick and talk about some things here, but you might understand why he might be frustrated about getting ran out of town for a team that he took to the Super Bowl, you know? And getting his name bashed publicly by a team that he took to the Super Bowl. So fast forward, what happens? He comes to Detroit, me included in this. We said, man, we got a bridge quarterback, man. He's just a Band-Aid, man. Like, he costs all this money. What are we doing? You know, whatever, right? What's he come do? He struggles. And what does Detroit media do? Bash him. (laughs) Like, like he's trash. We got to get a quarterback, blah, 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 blah. So he's hearing all of this stuff. And... What's the next? What's the next? He starts to play well. And while some people say, hey, man, great job, Jared. You're doing good. There's still others like he's still we still need somebody else. We still need to go in a different direction. 
Then what's he do? Takes us to the NFC Championship game. And what are people still doing? Bashing them. Bash them. There's a lot of people that are bashing them. I think there's a difference between talking about his strength and weaknesses and just bashing them. We got people in our comments that are saying, Jared Goff's just trash. He's just trash, right? So um, on top of that, the Hendon Hooker stuff, you know, you got people that are just like, man, we need to just start Hendon Hooker right now. Just like you said, Steve, uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a couple podcasts ago, you said there was people when Hendon Hook Hooker started practicing was saying, we need to go to Hendon Hooker right now. Week, week one, as soon as he got cleared from the pup list, people were saying Hendon Hooker's got to be the guy. This guy has not even seen a simulated practice yet. Yeah, and people are calling for him to start, man. While we talk about here, there's he's got all the tools and the potential is there. Hasn't taken an NFL snap. We don't know what we got in him yet. So to say the guy who's gotten you to where you're at right now in the middle of the season that Hendon Hooker should just come in and take over for him. It's just Jared has shown that he hears and sees this stuff from the media media doing interviews and speaking to some of the things that the interviewers have said about him during the interviews. He showed that he pays attention to this stuff and I think it's just taking a toll on him as a person. And I think it's something that similar as you talked about before, Michael Jordan and guys who use the things that people say, use the things that go on as bulletin board material, as fuel. I think that's the type of guy he is. Um, Last thing, and I'll turn it over to you. Uh, We had a guy in town, Matthew Stafford, who I enjoy. I enjoy Matthew Stafford. I enjoy him to the point if you watch our show, you know I don't even mention guys who used to be here's name, and I'm mentioning his name, and I appreciate what he did. I think that it's shown one thing in Jarrett that's a negative, and that's this. I don't think that he's truly connected to the Detroit fan and the journey that we've been on yet. I don't think that he truly understands, uh, you know, because he even talks about, hey, we got a winning team now. Hey, man. We had a great year one season <coughs> that can't that can't trump even I talk about my lifetime, 41 years of not being able to win. Right. That that last season, it hasn't erased the memories of coming to the Silver Dome and coming to Ford Field and going 0 16. Right. So there's still some 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 PTSD and some trauma from from some of those things that happen. So I don't think that Jared Goff quite understands that. But what I appreciate about Jared that Matt Stafford wouldn't do is every time Matt Stafford got in front of a microphone, it was like, hey, guys, we just need to play better. And, uh, you know, we just we, we just need to do a better job. And, uh, you know, it's on me. He would just say the right thing. What I like about Jared Goff is he's being honest and he's telling the truth. This is truly how he feels. And he's being transparent enough to share it with us. And I'm thankful for it. Keep doing it, Jared. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. What you what you think, Steve? William, I'm guilty. I also thought Jared Goff was going to be a bridge quarterback. And the day we made that trade and we weren't podcasting at the time, you know, this this little baby of ours is only about a year old. Mm-hmm. Um, I said the same thing. Bridge quarterback. I was like, oh, man, we're stuck with Jared Goff. Like, uh, I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with Jared Goff, but I loved the getting the first two round picks. Yeah. Um, I was wrong, but that those two th- those two years, I was sitting there thinking, like, man, all right, like I got to start watching a lot more college football. I got to start scouting some of these quarterbacks a little harder. I got to see who's going to fit for the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. Like I said in the opening of this, you have to be able to adapt. If you don't change your mind, then uh, in my in my opinion, you shouldn't have an opinion if you're just locked into that mindset. Because I was scouting quarterbacks hard, man. I had notes on every single guy who I thought would be a perfect fit for the Lions at the time. Now we've been talking draft prospects for a couple months now. The only quarterback we've really mentioned has been J.J. McCarthy just because he's a local Michigan kid. We don't have any interest for a quarterback. We, yeah. you know, we're set at the backup position if something goes down, but Jared Goff is QB1 until until the day he's not a Detroit Lion. Okay. Um, here's another thing. Goff came to town. First year was rough, 313-1. and one. It was terrible. It wasn't because of him, though. He played pretty well, especially in the second half of that season. Didn't light it up. I'm looking at the stats. Uh, 19 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, quarterback rating of 91.5. Pretty, pretty solid, you know, above 90 is pretty good year two, nine and eight knocking on the door of the playoffs. You know, we kind of held our, uh, you know, held uh, control of our own destiny for a while. That pa- that Panthers game kind of screwed us, needed a little help from the Seahawks uh, that last week. We went into Green Bay. <laughs> hey, we could have folded. We could have just folded in that Green Bay game two years ago on the road. Aaron Rodgers trying to get into the playoffs, knock them out. Yeah. Then, th- then this past season, 
probably the best football season I've ever been a part of being a season ticket holder, being at every single home game. Uh, the crowd was electric and, and I'll share a story real quick. And, and you've already heard this one before, but for some of our new listeners, 2008, when we went on 16, um, I was in a little place of Fort Sill, Oklahoma, an army basic training camp during football season. The, the last time I missed a football game every Tuesday, you know, the drill sergeants would show a little humanity and uh, they would come in and, you know, we would be able to ask them, Hey, who won the football games? You know, mm-hmm. and I would always raise my hand. I was the only kid from Michigan. Hey, the lions win. No, every week for 16 weeks, I would ask and they would say no. And I said, there is no way in hell. The lions are Oh, and 16. There is, this can't be like, are they singling me out just to fuck with me? Because there's no way that the lions are on 16 I graduate basic training. My parents come down, I get to see my parents. First thing I asked my dad, are the Lions have the, how many games have the Lions won? He goes zero, and that's what it sunk in for me. So we went from zero and sixteen, yeah, to ten bad minutes of football in an NFC Championship game against a damn good team to go uh, and possibly have a rematch against the Kansas City Chiefs, who we also beat last year, uh, last season in the opener. Um, we've come from zero and sixteen to that just two months ago, and we're still bashing Jared Goff. Jared mm-hmm. Goff didn't make any mistakes in that game. He can't make Craig Reynolds catch the ball or Josh Reynolds. I'm sorry. He can't make Jameer Gibbs not fumble. He can't make CJ Gardner Johnson miss tackles. He can't make Kendall Vildor not have a ball bounce off his freaking face. Like no. this guy gets bashed and who I think he's talking about just to guess. He did not specifically call them out, but he did say Detroit sports media in my mind. Who's the biggest media in Detroit? I think it's 97 won the ticket. That's probably what most people listen to. Like we're familiar with Dave Burkett and, and all those guys, the free press writers, but there's a guy from two to six who's on the radio. Who's not even a lions fan. Neither one of them are They're They're known New York giants fans and in San Francisco 49ers fans. They do not have an emotional connection to the city of Detroit. Like you and I, yep. this has been our team since we were in diapers. Yeah. They're, ta- they're sitting on there talking shit about golf and how he cost them the game and, and all kinds of other stuff. They're bashing Jameson Williams when he's out, you know, gambling and making a bet on his phone or lighting off fireworks or handing out water to kids. Like that's the kind of shit. And I've said it before that will drive players out of this city. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm a little worked up today. William. I don't know if you can tell Steve, you talking that talk today. Hey, hey I don't cuss on here too much, but talk your shit today. Mm. <laughs> Seriously. Like I, I'm a hundred percent with you. Uh, we need to, I understand that this is a business at the end of the day. And I understand that there are times to where we get critical about our, our players that we love so much, man. But we always, we always finish with, if you are wearing the Honolulu blue, we're cheering for you, period. Even for these college guys, we'll say, hey, man, this guy, that guy, don't particularly care for this guy as much as I care for that guy. But Darius Robinson. If you end up in the Honolulu blue, we're going to be cheering for you to get it right. At the end of the day, I do feel like there's people out there and we get them in the comments, too. We're idiots, have no idea what we're talking about. Um, uh, Just all it, you mostly know, true. That, that's mostly true. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we can't, <laughs> can't argue that sometimes. But um, it's a difference, man, between just being a little bit critical, but uh, wanting wanting a positive result at the end and, and, and just bashing people when it doesn't really make sense. When your quarterback takes you to the NFC championship game and, and you haven't been, I don't know, ever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Since the early nineties. Like, yeah. It feels like, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, uh, it just doesn't really make sense to me in the big scheme of things. Now you could want different things. You could want to see Hendon Hooker and every day. This is a space where we talk about you're, you're at the barber shop. You're in the locker room. You're hanging out with your buddies. You're in your buddy's basement. You're in the man cave. You're at the bar having drinks. And we're talking about the team that we love. You're entitled to your opinion, but why we got to bash people. And I think that's what Jared is talking about. I think that he is somebody who is, we talk about mental health and I don't want to get all off on a tangent, but somebody that talk, I think about is guys like that, Pre- Dak Prescott, who's been open about talking about mental health, even got our gymnastics phenomenons like Simone Biles. It, it, it plays a role. I've said it before how when John Warford was nipping at his coattails and Sean McVay was telling golf that he was trash, it took a toll on him mentally. It's been talked about in their camp, right? So he's doing things to fight that. And part of that is turning this thing into fuel and Jared Goff, I will say, and I, and I think I can speak for Steve at Detroit in three, one, three, we're proud of what you're doing here. Despite a lot of people hating on you. Now 
No. At the end of the day, have I said what I said in previous podcasts and do I stand on it in a sense of I still think that we should see what we have in a guy like Hendon Hooker. And Jared, if you struggle in third quarters this following season, we're still going to get on Detroit in 313 and talk about it. But at the end of the day, long as you're strapping on that 16 in Honolulu blue or all whites or whatever jerseys might be all black jerseys. Who knows what's going to come out on the 18th? We'll be there, though, grabbing jerseys just so you guys know. One more week. One more week. Uh, we're going to be cheering for you, man, and we wish you nothing but the best. It, guys, Detroit media, Detroit fans, don't bash this guy. Don't hammer him. Don't let these guys twist this thing into now Jared Goff hates the fans because I know after that first playoff game, Jared Goff was overjoyed with the chance. Matt Stafford came to town, uh, a, a player that I don't care what you think about matt stafford as a or or his old lady as a person uh it's hard not to love what matt stafford did while he was here playing with a messed up neck and spine and shoulders and all types of injuries and just continuing to go out there and give us everything that he had and showing up in the community we booed that man when he came to town and all we did was chant jared 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 man so uh, he spoke about that after the after that game, and you could hear it in his voice and see it in his face how much that meant to him. And that's the same guy who's quarterbacking for us right now, man. Don't let him spin it on you. They weren't just chanting Jared Goff at Ford Field. It was Red Wings games, grocery stores, concerts. It still goes on today. Yeah. Um. And, and another thing about the Detroit media. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. Last year's draft, there was people bashing it. Yeah. Not you and me. Yeah. You and I weren't drafting or, or, or bashing it. We we loved it. We loved yeah. every single pick. We just said, hey, we could have changed up the order. No big deal. Still got our guys. Yeah. There was people who were doing live shows yeah. who have reputable names yeah. on sports networks who walked off the set when certain picks were made. Yeah. That is what we're talking about. You guys are also criticizing Brad Holmes. Now, we've been firm but fair because yeah. I can't say that I haven't come on here and said some things about Dan Campbell, about not kicking field goals, taking points, that kind of stuff. But never in my mind have I ever said or hinted at wanting Dan Campbell fired. He's the coach. Yeah. He's the coach for hopefully 15, 20, 25 years. We go on a dynasty run. He takes over and becomes the next Belichick. I hope. Yeah. And that's my coach. That's the guy who's changed this whole thing. Him, Sheila, Chris Spielman, Brad Holmes. Those are the guys responsible for that. I do not want to go back to the old days of 2008, Steve Mariucci, yeah. uh, that road. I don't want to go back there. I don't yeah. want to go back to the coach shuffle every three years. I don't want to go back to the quarterback shuffle every five years. I'm done. Jared Goff's the guy. Dan Campbell's the coach. Brad Holmes is the GM. Sheila's a damn good. I don't know what her official title is. I know she doesn't technically own the team. Her mom does, but she she's in charge. Yeah. You know, she, she's the boss. She's got the big dick swinging around. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just little stuff like that. And, and like I said, you know, the Jamison Williams stuff and all that was going on, the draft, Jared Goff. It's just, man, like you think these guys don't listen? Like they might say they don't listen. They got people in their ears telling them what's going on if they're not listening themselves. They see the headlines. They have social media. They, they know what's going on. Here at Detroit Den 313, like Will said, we are firm but fair. N the name Detroit Den, we want you guys to feel like you're in your man cave, in your den, talking sports, having a good time shooting the shit with Steve and Will. You know, when we go live, we like to answer questions. That's the kind of stuff we like to do. Firm but fair. Never once said Jared Goff sucks or, you know, he's had some bad games. He's had bad stretches, but, you know, it happens. It's the NFL. Oh. You have off days. Still yeah. made it to the NFC Championship. Should have went to the Super Bowl. Should have won the Super Bowl. Should have yeah. been on Woodward during a parade. 2024. I should, I should still be living in the Comerica Park Detroit Tigers mouth. But No, you, get, you said two weeks. You no, know, who knows? Crazy things happen. <laughs> so, guys, we're just down here to defend Jared. Uh, that's our quarterback. Like like Will said, we're not technically Detroit sports media, but we do have somewhat of a platform. So we have to – we could have jumped on here yesterday 10 minutes after this happened and just gave a live reaction and and not had our, our ducks in a row, our eyes, eyes dotted and T's crossed. But we wanted to let it absorb, let it let us sink this in a little bit. So could have had this out yesterday, but we wanted to kind of let it simmer. So – Hit that like button, stick around, subscribe if you're new here, leave some comments, we'll get back to you. Peace.